While ready to spend half a trillion euros, the Eurozone is going to double the lending power of its future crisis fund. European finance ministers settled on the figure at their Brussels meeting, which continues today. But as leaders are closing in on a solution for their thorny problem, the dilemma over the future at Europe's central bank is only just beginning. Speculation is ramping up about the succession race at the ECB, with former frontrunner Axel Weber out of the picture, while new candidates could emerge for post of the president. Analysts say that Finland's Erki Likinen could be one of them. Well, for more on these issues, let's go live to Brussels. ING's chief economist, Carson Bretsky, joins me now. Carson, I was reading your note today, and it was very interesting. You were saying, you know, we always beat ourselves down. We always say that Europe isn't achieving anything. But actually, this is a glimmer of hope because they have at least decided to increase this fund. Exactly. We've seen they've they've doing something, they've, they've done something, but the biggest problem right now is they're only ring fencing the big problem. We, we're getting decisions here on the, on, on the far future, but we do not get really concrete decisions on, on how to solve the current crisis. And this is the biggest problem. Why are we not getting decisions on the shorter term? Is this because they hope that by just calming the markets, the problem will go away? It's two things. Um, there is a risk of complacency, but the other thing is there, there is no agreement. There, there are so many national issues at stake, so it's very hard to keep your head cool and to, to go out and to, to grasp the, the complexity. It's a kind of multi-dimensional horse trading that we're in right now. So this is why we do not get concrete decisions and agreement on the near term, on the near term future. Uh, Carson, when are we going to get an agreement? If, for example, Portugal needs a bailout, that will force our leaders and our finance ministers to take concrete action. We, we need to get an agreement really by the end of March. That we, we have all the expectations in the markets. Leaders need to come up with this big bang, uh, the comprehensive package. We need to see something. If they cannot deliver by the end of March, then there will be a huge disappointment in markets in the, and the outside world. And uh, speaking of disappointment, we had the disappointing GDP figure, not only from France, but also from Germany. How are you disappointed? I'm not really disappointed. This was in, in line with expectations. Uh, we, we had a strong winter. We had a, a huge snowfall in December. So I think especially if you look at the German economy, it's a temporary blip. And we're going to see that the German recovery picks up pace again in 2011 and will be probably the powerhouse of the Eurozone. And Carson, you know, I hadn't spoken to you since last week when we had that gobsmacking announcement that Axel Weber was stepping out of the race uh, from ECB president. Who would you put your money on? Right now, it's very tricky. I think we should also, there are no deal breakers anymore. The most likely candidate probably is Mario Draghi right now because it's, he would still fit into the, the kind of German French picture. Because don't forget, the French will want to have someone in the executive board. And to get the French representative in the ECB, we will need to have an ECB president either from France or from Germany. Yeah, from Italy and, or from Germany. And certainly, Carsten, well, at least that race got just that little bit more exciting. Carsten Bretzky there.